So I've been using the Pixel 6 Pro as my everyday device for the past few weeks and my full in-depth review will be coming to the channel very soon, so stay tuned for that. But as with any Pixel device I've literally ever used, I found myself a little underwhelmed with how limiting the home screen launcher is in terms of customization. And so whilst I've kept the Pixel 6 Pro unrooted, given one of the next devices I'll be using and reviewing will be the regular Pixel 6, I wanna see whether I enjoy the experience more or less if the phone is rooted. See, the good folks behind the super popular Launch Air Launcher just released a brand new update that not only brings with it a bunch of Android 12 exclusive features like Material U auto theming, but it now also supports the Quick Switch module on Android 12, which means if you have a rooted phone, you can actually set Launch Air as the default system launcher, meaning it gains access to the gestural navigation system, and this results in a much smoother performance in regards to animations and fluidity. And so that brings us to this video. I was just gonna root the Pixel 6 and be done with it, but I thought, why not film the process to ensure anyone else wanting to do the same can follow along. It's nearly the exact same process with the Pixel 6 Pro, so if that's the phone you're using, then you're covered as well. And I'll make mention of any steps that differ throughout. Now, a huge disclaimer up front here. Firstly, in no way am I suggesting you should actually root your phone. That is purely your decision, and I'm just simply showcasing the process. And secondly, this process will completely wipe your phone at least once, maybe even twice, depending on the process. So if you do decide to go ahead, make sure you create a full backup of your phone before doing anything. But with that out of the way, let's dive in. All right, the first thing we need to do is download some files that will enable our phone to interact with our computer. And I've left some links down below to where you can pick these up, but just keep in mind, there are different versions for Windows and Mac, so make sure you grab the relevant files suited for your PC device of choice. But once you've downloaded them, we then wanna extract the downloaded zip file, and then within that, you should see a folder here called Platform Tools. I'm gonna to drag and drop this over to my desktop, and I suggest you do the same so that following this tutorial will be just that little bit easier. Okay, the next step is to unlock our phone's bootloader. And this part of the process will completely wipe your phone. So it's often better to do this before you've even set the thing up. But if you're already using a phone, then as I said, just make sure to perform a complete backup of your device so you don't lose anything important. So with our phone switched on, we need to first enable developer options, which we can do so by coming into our phone settings, navigating down to the about phone menu. And then if we come down all the way to the bottom, we should see this option called build number. And then we need to tap that seven times. When we do, our passcode will pop up. So we'll input our passcode. Then we can head back into the settings menu and then we'll come into the system page. And now a new section should show up near the bottom called developer options. We'll tap on that and then within this page, we need to find a setting called OEM unlocking and make sure it is switched to on. You'll need to input your passcode again, so do that and then tap on enable. Then we'll come down to the debugging section and enable USB debugging. And from there, we need to plug our phone into our computer. Okay, so on our computer, we now wanna launch into our command prompt application. So here on my Mac, I'm gonna be using the terminal application, but if you're using a Windows device, then you can just use the command prompt application. But once it's opened up, we then wanna type the following, cd space desktop, then enter, and then cd space platform dash tools, then enter. And this will direct the terminal to that platform tools folder that we moved to our desktop earlier. From there, type in dot slash ADB space devices on a Mac or just ADB devices if you're on a Windows machine, but then we wanna hit enter. And once you do that, you'll probably get this authorization pop up on your phone that asks to allow USB debugging, which you wanna allow. Once that's done, you should now see a random number here that indicates your device is correctly set up. It might also show as blank if you haven't yet enabled USB debugging or authorized it on your phone yet, or it could also be blank if the cable you're using is faulty or it's not fully plugged in. So check all of those things if this number isn't showing up for you. But once this number shows up, we're now gonna type in dot slash ADB, or again, just ADB if you're on a Windows device, then space, then reboot space bootloader, and then hit enter to launch our phone into fastboot mode. Then we need to type in the following command dot slash fastboot or just fastboot if you're on a Windows machine, then space, flashing, space, unlock, then hit enter. You should then see a confirmation message on your device and we then wanna use the volume keys on our phone to select the unlock the bootloader option, then hit the power key to confirm. 
The bootloader will then be unlocked and you can then hit the power button to reboot your phone. And it's at this point that your phone will have been completely wiped and restored to its factory state, except the bootloader is now locked. Now, normally I fully set my phone up properly here, but I did encounter another factory reset later on during this process. So it might be worth just rushing through the setup process once again, just in case. And then if your phone isn't wiped again later down the line, then you can always do a factory reset, which will trigger the setup process again, meaning you can restore from a backup as per usual. Either way, once your phone is back on, make sure you re-enable USB debugging in the developer options as this setting will have been reset in the wiping process. And now we need to head back to our PCs to locate the factory image file for our Pixel 6 or 6 Pro. Google actually makes this process outrageously easy because they put all of their factory image files onto their own developer website every single time an update is released. So we wanna find the version that is relevant to whatever software patch we're currently on. So in this case, I'm running the October 2021 option, which is this one here. And if you're unsure, just double check that build number and download the factory image with the corresponding number. This is literally the only step that differs depending on if you're using the regular Pixel 6 or 6 Pro, you just need to download the correct file that suits your device of choice. Now it is a pretty large file, so it might take a while to download, but once it is downloaded, we then need to unzip it. Within that unzipped folder, you should see a bunch of different files and we're looking for another zip file here. And for the regular Pixel 6, you can see it's this one called image.orioli-blah-blah-blah.zip. For the 6 Pro, it'll be image.raven-blah-blah-blah-blah.zip. So we're gonna unzip that and then in this folder, we'll see some more files, but the one we're looking for is called boot.image. So we wanna take this boot image file and transfer it over to our device of choice. So for me, I'm just gonna place it in the downloads folder on my phone using Android file transfer. But whilst we're in this Pixel 6 image folder, we also wanna locate a file here called vbmeta.image and transfer that to our platform tools folder on the desktop because we'll need that a little later on. Now that we've done that, we wanna head back to our phones and download and install the Magisk Manager application, which of course I'll leave a link to down below. Because we're running Android 12, we actually need the latest Canary version, otherwise this process won't work. So once it's installed, we wanna then launch it and we should see a button here towards the top that says install. So we'll tap on that and then tap the select and patch a file option. From here, we wanna find that boot image file we just transferred to the downloads folder, select it and then tap let's go. Magisk Manager will then create a patched version of this boot image file and store it in the downloads folder on our phone as well. And so we then need to hop back onto our computer and locate that file either via the Android file transfer app or just via the file explorer on a Windows device. And then we wanna transfer that file, which would be called magisk underscore patch and then some random numbers dot image to the platform tools folder on our desktop. So keeping our device plugged in, we now wanna jump back to our command prompt application and launch our phone back into fast boot mode by typing dot slash ADB or just ADB on a Windows device, then space, then reboot, space, bootloader, and then hit enter. Once our phone is booted back into fast boot mode, we first need to disable the DM Verity verification by flashing that VB meta file moved over to the platform tools folder earlier. So to do that, we're gonna type in dot slash fastboot or again, just fastboot on a Windows device, then space, then flash, space, dash, dash, disable, dash, verity, space, dash, dash, disable, dash, verification, space, VB meta, space, then VB meta dot IMG. If you don't wanna type all of that out, which I don't blame you if that's the case, then I'll leave the command down in the description below so you can copy and paste it in instead. But then as soon as we hit enter, AVB and DM Verity should be disabled. And now using our command prompt once again, we can type the following, dot slash fastboot, or again, just fastboot on a Windows machine, then space, flash, space, boot, space. And then we wanna drag and drop the magisk underscore patched image file directly from our platform tools folder to where our cursor is. And once that's completed, we can then hit enter. That image file will then be patched over. And once it's done, you can then reboot your phone. However, I actually encountered an inescapable boot loop right at this step of the process. So I actually had to do a manual factory reset myself via this Android recovery menu and then go through the process of setting up my phone again. And I'm not sure if that will happen to you, but at least you're aware it can happen. But once it was wiped and rebooted once again, I had this weird grayed out magisk icon in my app drawer, which when tapped, 
prompted me to complete the setup process. This then rebooted my phone once again. And then finally, my phone was successfully rooted. So a little more complicated than previous Android versions, thanks to that DM Verity step and that unexpected boot loop issue, but all in all, still a relatively simple process. And so the first thing I had to do after rooting my Pixel 6 was install the Quick Switch application, followed by the latest LaunchAir 12 APK. Then after a reboot, I was able to select LaunchAir 12 as my default launcher via the Quick Switch application. And then after yet another reboot, I was finally up and running with LaunchAir 12 set up as my phone's stock default launcher. And I've got to say, it works pretty beautifully. You will experience the occasional crash here and there, usually while you're setting up your home screen, but the fact that I can now not only use third-party icon packs, as well as have a much wider grid size selection, but also hide both the at a glance widget and the Google search bar in the dock is seriously amazing. I can now create pretty much any home screen I like whilst simultaneously retaining that fluid, buttery smooth home screen launcher experience. And it really is super amazing. If you wanna see a full overview of this new version of LaunchAir, let me know by dropping a thumbs up. And if you wanna find out whether I continue using the regular Pixel 6 with root access enabled, then stay tuned for the full review, which will be dropping sometime in December. Aside from that, if all went well, you should now have yourself a rooted Pixel 6 or 6 Pro. And so if you're now wondering how to make the most of your newly rooted phone, well, I've made several videos that unpack a stack of amazing root only features. So I'll leave that playlist linked up in the cards and down in the description below. Or if you've made it this far in the video and you're still not sure whether you should go through with the rooting process at all, then I'll also leave a link to a video that unpacks seven reasons why you might wanna avoid rooting your phone, which is probably worth a watch. Aside from that, if you found this video helpful, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.